God's grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus, who's uh, our glory, as we talked about last week, but also our security. We're secure in him, dear Christian friends. Today I'm going to talk to you uh, the continuation of what we shared last week, which, uh, again, last week was about glory. This week it's about secure in God's love. Secure in God's love. We're in this series about... Uh, Oh, living in the kingdom and the gifts God gives to us. And one of the things I truly believe we have to know is that we're secure. Talk about that as we go through our message. When you were a young child, did you have a security blanket? Something you could hold and cuddle when you were afraid or held on to when you just wanted to feel secure amid all the changes in life. The good news is we have a security blanket. We do. And it's centered in God's love, his promise to us. Well, I don't know about you, I can go back uh, almost to Beatles days. Uh, I was born in 1960, so I remember as a young child all the excitement about the Beatles. They had a song, All You Need Is Love. Some of us could probably sing it together. And I do believe what they sang was true, except what kind of love were they talking about? I would contend all we do need is love, but God's love for us. And we need to know that so we have assurance and security. But the problem is we seek love in all the wrong places. Another song, a woman just looking around where is the love that I need that will make me feel secure as I go through this life? Someone has said there's two basic fears we have in life, and I do agree with this. The fear of never being loved. You know, there are people that I meet that go through life who just don't feel loved yet. They maybe didn't get it from parents or others. Maybe they were shown that love, but for whatever reason, they never... They never felt like they were loved. They didn't uh, understand. And because they weren't loved, they didn't feel security. Well, our job is to help others feel loved and secure. So the second fear is the fear of never being able to love ourselves, um, to love other people, to be alone. Well, the good news is we're not alone. Jeremiah tells us in chapter 31, I've loved you with an everlasting love, God says. Therefore, I've continued my faithfulness to you. In our Old Testament reading of Deuteronomy, I don't know if you caught it. Uh, it's a long section, but as you look at that, God made the Israelites his people. Why did he do it? Not because they were so large in number or so great, but rather because he made promises and he loved them. Well, it tells us in Ephesians, we're to be imitators of God and his love. It says we're his beloved children, and we're to walk in love as Christ loved us. And then what does it say? And gave himself up for us. You'll find it in scripture. It'll unite those two things. It won't typically just say God loves us. It'll point to Jesus in his love for us. Our world isn't so secure, is it? Many of you maybe have reached this age where you get social security. Are we really secure with social security? We'd like to think so, right? We put in money for our retirement and making it later in life, but now they're talking about tinkering with it, right? extending the age more, changing the amount, and it makes all of us feel a little bit secure. I talk to young people and they wonder, I won't have any security, no money will come my way, I just fork it out for others. I like what Oliver Berkman said. Uh, I disagree though with him a little bit. There's, let's read this quote, it says, true security lies in the unrestrained embrace of what? insecurity, in the recognition we can never really stand on solid ground and never can. That ending is what I disagree with. 
We can have security. We can stand on solid ground. But I understand in this life we're insecure. We could have an earthquake, even in Illinois this very morning. Pray it doesn't happen, but it could happen. Uh, you know, a comet or something could hit us. Russia could attack a uh, country or North Korea. Our life could change in an instant. We could have health problems or somebody near to us could pass away or have um, uh, injury of some kind, a car accident. Life is insecure, but we are secure. We are secure. And this passage is so marvelous because it tells us about the Holy Spirit. We don't know how to pray as we ought. We don't pray according to God's will. But we learned last week the Holy Spirit intercedes or prays for us according to God's will. We are secure because behind the scenes, the Holy Spirit is with us. Secondly, we have the Father in heaven who loves us. We know his love by him sending Jesus, but it says he foreknows us, he calls us, he predestines us, he justifies and glorifies us. And then Jesus himself, the Son who dies for us, rises again, who rules over the earth and who intercedes for us. I love how it starts. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Jesus intercedes for us. It means we're secure. That's the Father's heart for us. Well, first, we learn that God works all things together for our good. It doesn't say all things are good. Notice, in Romans 8.28, we know, emphasize, we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose, all things work together for good. They do. But it sure doesn't seem like it. And please hear me correctly. I'm not saying, Paul is not saying that everything is good. It's not. There's evil in the world. People can be mean. We can make bad decisions. And yet, God can use it in the mix to put it together and bring good in our lives. The reminder I have of that is we live in a fallen world. And it's like a tapestry, a rug. You guys have seen this. You flip over the rug, and that's what this is. On the left-hand side, it's a bunch of strings. It's a bunch of, uh, it doesn't make all that much sense, but you flip it over, and it reveals clearly what it is, and it's beautiful and magnificent. Unfortunately, we live in this time on the underside. We see the knots, and we say, God, how can you use this for good in my life? I don't get it. I'm upset. Well, what I love about the story of Joseph that we talked about last week in Elevate is Joseph was sold by his brothers, almost killed. He was accused of rape. He was thrown in prison. He was promised that uh, the cupbearer would remember him and bring his name before Pharaoh, and he was forgotten. But the text says, the Lord was with him. The Lord was with him. And Joseph, when his brothers came to him, and he could have payback time, he says, don't fear. Am I in the place of God? As for you, my brothers, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring about the saving of many people's lives. That's what God does. Things do happen in our lives and he brings it together for good. Well, who receives the promise of verse 28? First, it says, those who are loving God. So those who don't fear, love, and trust in God, they don't have the promise that everything works together for good. God is using even his judgment to nudge them to come to faith, but the promise isn't there for those who don't believe in a loving God. Well, let's look at this statement. Our security is not in our love for God, though. Our love for God is frail and fickle, faltering. Ah, but God's love for us, it's steadfast, faithful, persevering. 
And so who receives the promise? Yes, those who love God, but then it says those who are called according to his purpose. I like how 1 John puts it. He says, and this is love. Not that we love God, but he loves us. It's not this way. It's this way, from heaven to us. God loved us and sent his son, Jesus, to be the sacrifice of the propitiation for our sins. Notice, beloved, beloved of God, if God loved us in this way, we ought to love one another. And it goes on. How do we know God's purpose? How do we know we're loved? How do we know that we can be secure? Romans 8, 29, actually. For those whom he foreknew, he predestined for what? To become like Jesus, that Jesus might be the firstborn among many brothers, that Jesus might be exalted, that he might be lifted up, that he might receive the blessings that are due him. It goes on, those whom he predestined, he called, those who he called, he justified, those who he justified, he glorified. Notice, it ends up in our glorification. But we face a real world, don't we? And so Paul says a bunch of questions and he answers them that give us security. The first question is, who will oppose us? And then it goes, if God is for us, who can be against us? What shall we say with regard to these things? What shall we say of a God who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, if Jesus died for us in love, will God let it end there? No, he will graciously give us all things in Jesus. So it starts out with, are we on the right team? Will God oppose us? The answer is no, and we know that because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. Second question, ah, but somebody might be against us. They might even condemn us. Who will condemn us? Goes on. God will not condemn us in verses 33 to 36. It says, who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It's God who justifies. Who's the one who condemns? Christ Jesus, who died. More than that, who's raised? Who's at the right hand of God and interceding for us? No, Jesus is not the condemner. In fact, it says in 1 John, uh, beautiful comfort for believers, my little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you don't sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus the righteous one. We have somebody who's there at our side when we sin, who says, ah, Father, that sin, I've died for it. And the marvel is, and the security is there in passages like Romans 5, 8. Will God condemn us? No. It says, God shows his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. If he died for us when we were rebels against him, that's secure love. He loves us that much. It even says in 1 John 3, uh, some of you might know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. 1 John 3, 16 says it this way, by this we know love, that Jesus laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. What I so love about this section of scripture, and yes, it's one of my favorites, Romans chapter eight, uh, is it starts out with a marvelous scripture. St. Paul says, there is therefore, and he goes through all those reasons for it previously, but I love this three-letter word. Now there's no condemnation. Now no condemnation. For who? For those who are in Christ Jesus. Oh, but there is a condemner. There is an accuser. When we were studying Revelation, we found that out. Revelation chapter 12, we see it in the book of Job as well. 
It says, the salvation, the power, the kingdom of our God, the authority of his Christ has come, and the good news is the accuser of our brothers and sisters have been thrown down. What does he do? He accuses them day and night before our God. There is an accuser. We better be careful. One of the things that breaks my heart is so often in the church, um, people get the idea that we're just about condemning and pointing out sins. No, we don't point out sins for their own sake. We point out sins so that people recognize they need the love of God. They need the forgiveness of Jesus. We dare not fall into the mode of being accusers and condemners. Oh, you have sinned. I do too, but we have a savior. I like Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah says, he who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who's my adversary? Let him come, come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. If God helps me, who will declare me guilty? Ah, so we have a God who's for us, who won't oppose us, who won't condemn us. And because of that, we have the third uh, question. It says, who or what will separate us from God's love? Answer, nothing will separate us from God's love in Jesus Christ. But yet we live in a world where we have separation anxiety. We might have love around us, but oh gosh, lightning, and we had it a few nights ago, scary, lots of rain, builds anxiety. We have troubles in our life, and yet God is there. But you say, oh, but pastor, you remember the story of Genesis. What happened is Adam and Eve sinned, and God put cherubim there to keep his people away from the tree of life. See, he booted them out. He will throw us out too. Ah, but that's not the end of the story. It's only the beginning. If they ate of the tree of life in that fallen state when they weren't redeemed yet, when Jesus hadn't died for their sins, it'd be horrible. They would have dreaded that. What do we do? Sometimes we hang on, and we should hang on to God's love. I love this picture. I live it regularly. Kids say, don't leave me. I'm not going to let you leave. The promise is God won't leave us. Yes, people will leave you. Might be a spouse, might be a parent, might be a friend, might even be a grandchild. The promise is God will not leave you. I've experienced, you live long enough, uh, I miss my parents tremendously. And yet God filled the void. I know he won't leave me. If everyone else does, God will be there. And I know secondly, that human love will fail me. We're imperfect people, we sin, we aggravate each other, but God's love is a constant. His love will not fail. There will be no condemnation now, no condemnation, no separation ever. Look what it says, I'm sure. I love how it starts, before it said, we know, we know that God is working all things for good. I'm sure, I'm confident, I'm convinced that not death, life, angels, rulers, things present nor things to come, powers, height, depth, nor anything else in all creation will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. I love that listing. You go, check this one off. Death mm -mm, won't separate us from Jesus. The devil separate us from Jesus. No way. Nothing in all creation can separate us from God's love. So just as a review here, we're secure in God's love because first, no person can separate us from Jesus' love for us. It's in verse 35. Verses 35, 38, and 9, no trial or circumstance in life can separate us from Jesus' love for us. Then the blanket statement, nothing in creation can separate us from Jesus' love. So what's the punchline? The punchline is the only security in life 
is in Jesus' love for us. But some of you have experienced parental love. I love this next picture because it has a little heart and a parent holding the child's uh, hands, just kind of enveloping them and saying, little boy, little girl, I love you. Jesus loves you. God's love is there for us. He will not separate himself for us, from us. Last point, we're more than conquerors through God's love. Uh, DC Kevin talked about that. No, and all these things were more than conquerors through him who loved us. More than conquerors. I, I love the picture. It's a little small for you, but it's, it, it's, a, it's a soldier who's defeating the devil himself. We're more than conquerors. I love the word. Um, it, it, it super conquers. It's made up of two words who pair over and above and Nike. We're super Nike people. We're more than conquerors no matter what comes our way in life. And so what do we do? How can we be victorious? By growing in our faith in Jesus, by clinging more and more to him. As 1 John says, everyone who's been born of God overcomes the world. What's the victory that overcomes the world? It's our faith. We become more like Christ even as we suffer. His purposes will be achieved through us. Others will see the grace of God at work in our lives. God's love is so secure, it's like it's locked up. Take it to the bank. It's for certain. I love what Ruth Harms Calkin wrote uh, to kind of pull this all together. She said, God, I may fall flat on my face. I may fail until I feel old. I'll be beaten and done in. Yet your love for me, it's changeless. All the music may go out of my life. My private world may shatter to dust. Even so, you'll hold me in the palm of your steady hand. No turns in the affairs of my fractured life can baffle you. Satan with all his boasting tactics cannot distract you. Nothing can separate me from your measureless love. Pain can't, disappointment can't, anguish can't, yesterday, today, tomorrow can't. The love of my dearest love can't. Death can't, life can't. Riots, war, insanity, unidentity, hunger, neuroses, disease. None of these things or all of them together can budge the fact that what? I'm dearly loved. I'm completely forgiven. I'm forever free through Jesus Christ, your beloved son. Jesus himself said about our security, I give my sheep everlasting life. They will never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. And by the way, the father gave them to me. No one's greater than him. Even if they could snatch them out of my hand, they couldn't snatch them out of God's hand. So what's the promise? The promise is the Lord will rescue us from every evil work. He'll bring us safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. I close with this. Oh, I love teddy bears. They're a reminder of the love of people for us. In this case, there's two teddy bears. There's a heart of love above them. Uh, I like the fact they're together as well. The triune God gives us security. And what does God say to us? I loved you yesterday. I love you still. I always have, and I always will. And our prayer needs to be like the Apostle Paul, who prayed for us and the people of his day. And he said, I pray that you might have strength to comprehend with all the saints what's the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you might be filled with the fullness of God. And the fullness of God is security in Jesus Christ, glory in the end. And when you know your love like that, you love others. We do it because we're secure in him. My prayer for you is that you might know that no matter what comes your way in life, no matter who has been against you, 
or who is against you in the future, that you know somebody is for you, that he's using all things together for good, that he's making you a super conqueror, a super Nike person for his glory. May that be your confidence and hope. In Jesus' name, amen.